Hello there, everybody. How are, how are you all? I hope you're good. I uh, hope everybody's coping with this lockdown. Groundhog Day again. No pubs. Crazy. So, uh, you'll be glad to see my face again with some more challenging problems for you. Uh, we're gonna. What I'm gonna do today is I'm just gonna go over the notes I've sent you the last few weeks, and I will go over a little bit more of the algebra. I'm kind of hoping that as we progress with the maths, you'll pick the algebra up, and I'll be doing examples of algebra as we go. And uh, excuse me, and I'll just take it from there. What I'll do is I'll send you kind of weekly tasks and we'll have a wee kind of tutorial at the end of the term and that should be fine. So it might be quite hard though because it'll be open book. So we'll see what happens. This here, it's quite hard to see actually. It depends on the light and stuff. I've not quite got this perfected. I've only done a few videos so far. But uh, I will get it sorted. In the meantime though, I've got this wee doodah and uh, do wee sketches on this camera here, so I'll be kind of flipping backwards and forwards. Right, so, let's see. Right, as I say, if you just kind of, if you've got the notes here, or you should have the notes here, I'll put them up with this anyway. You should uh, just kind of go through the notes with me. Uh, for instance, here I'm looking at page one, functions and graphs. I'm wanting to uh, see engineers need to use functions to quantify the whatever solution they're coming up with for any kind of problem or improvement of a system or whatever. And one of the best ways to visualize that is on a graph. And on a graph it explicitly tells you uh, the differences between the different variables you're using and you can maybe concentrate on one of the variables that you want to look at and it will tell you certain things about it, about the characteristics of whatever machine or electrical circuit or, or system that you're looking at. Now, there's a lot to the graphs and geometry and trigonometry but I'm hoping to kind of short circuit a lot of that because it is going to be difficult uh, doing it like this. But as I say, I, I think you'll be, you'll have a good enough knowledge by the end of the, the term. So, what I'm trying to do here, talking about this farmer with his, uh, his wall, his bit of fencing here. I'm trying to give you an example of why somebody would use an equation or a function and how you would kind of build that function around the problem. And here the farmer's got 150 metres of fence. He wants to find the largest area possible. So how is he going to kind of figure that out? And what he's got a wall, then a bit of fence in there. So, I mean, what about, so if you're saying to yourself, right, you have to set your kind of variables and uh, it's like, well, what he's doing there is saying, well, the breadth or the shortest kind of side, he's going to call that X. And if it's a rectangle, there's, there's going to have to be two of these lengths, or, well, two of these breadths. And that's going, that's where the 2X comes from there, on that wee diagram there, because the length on the other side is going to be the, the total length minus the two bits from the top and the bottom, which is the 2X. So that's your first kind of idea of using an equation to solve a real physical problem that this farmer's got. Right, and like, uh, if you want to get the area of a square, if you're in your living room or something and you want to work out how much carpet you need, uh, you, you'll go 3 metres that way, 5 metres that way, so you'll need like 15 metres squared of carpet. It's kind of like the same thing here, looking at the area, He's thinking about the breadth times the length 
that is going to be the area of it. And he's, he's already came up with an expression for the, the length, which is 150 minus 2x. And then he's going to multiply that by the breadth to get the area. So that's where you get the 150 minus 2x in a bracket multiplied by the x, which gives us 2x squared minus 150a minus 150, no, oh, sorry, 150 minus 150x, sorry, minus 250a, uh, 150x minus 2x squared. Right, and that's our, that's the kind of final expression he gets for, for area, right, and Hey again. Just try to get my notes up there on the screen. Right, uh, right so what we're saying there is Thinking about the length as a function, this is on page 2, you would say the length as a function of x, or the, length, the length will depend on x, and that equals 150 minus, minus 2x, or you could write that as L of x, I don't know if you can see this, L of x, L of x and that is the length is a function of x or the, the length the function of length relative to to x so that is the determining factor of how long it's going to be but also the length is determined determined by the function of the value x so and also see looking at the the breadth the breadth is equal to x. So whatever value x is, it's always it's going to be the same. Just for this particular instance here, so the breadth of x is equal to x, so that's the same. So if, uh, if x equals 1, the breadth is going to be 1, or x equals 2, the breadth equals uh, 2. Whereas when you look at the length, so if, if x equals 1, the length is going to be 100. 48, is that right? x equals 5, the length equals 140, uh, x equals 10, it's going to be 130, so the bigger the x gets, the shorter this is going to get, but that's just shown there. So I'll say it there, so the length L of x is a function which it applies to the x value to find the length. So the function here is multiplying x by 2 then subtracting that from the 150 and that is the function now the, the area thinking about the area being the length times the breadth I know it's quite it's, it's hard to see this and if I switch to the other wee camera thing I have to turn this off well, I'll kind of switch the camera off. I'll try and just go with this just now, and when I need to use that, I'll change it over, okay? Right, uh, what are we looking at? So the area is equal to the length times the breadth. You could say that then, in terms of x, that would be the length as a function of x times the breadth as a function of x. We know that x, whatever x is for, for the breadth, it's going to be the same value, so we can just say that's, that's x, but this L of x, the, the length of x in terms of x is equal to 150 minus 2x. So we put this here, 150 minus 2x times x. 
But it's written, it's on the it is on the notes, so if you can't see it, I'm just trying to there's 150x minus 2x squared. So the function of area in terms of x is equal to 150x minus 2x squared. So we've got a wee example there. So say x was 10. So the a, a of 10, I've written 10 there because x is now 10. And that shows like that, that, that the function means any value, you can use any value for x. So in this particular instance, a of 10 equals 150 times 10 minus 2 times 10 squared. And that gives us 1300 meters squared. So, this is where we start looking at a graph. This is where, where a graph is important and very useful for visualising what's going on. Now, one of the tasks I set you was to work out the, the areas for x at 20, 30, 40, 50 and plot the graph. Which, let's see. Yep, it's this one on page four. So looking at that, you've got the, the area on the, the vertical column and uh, the x along the bottom there. And uh, looking at that equation and working it out for each one, you find that for 20, you get 2,200, 30 is 27, 40 is 28, and 50 a bit smaller at 2500 so looking at the graph there you can kind of tell that it goes up a slight bit before it goes down to this 28 you can't you don't know it exactly but you know that's roughly between 35 and 40 it just so happens actually it's 37 and a half when you put it and gives you the maximum area but the point of this exercise was to realize if you do build an equation for any kind of a uh, problem that you have you can visually inspect it by using a graph and what was that 225 or so i can't remember so you can you can visually inspect it quickly using a graph if you didn't have the graph there and you were trying to look at the numbers and match them up it would be very difficult to 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 come up with the right answer. Right, and what was it? Like 28, 1, 12. It was only a tiny bit bigger, but it's still a bit bigger. Another sheep could maybe get squished out there. Oops. Right. right. Now, what I was trying to do there is you can build on the function you've got there. You can see yourself, well, it's going to cost me £10 per square metre. And if I know that the cost here is going to be 10 times the area, or the cost in terms of the area is going to equal to 10A, right, I can say, well, the, the cost as a function of A is equal to 10A. But I know that A is a function of X. So instead of us needing to know the area to find out the cost of this, as soon as you decide on what value of x to use, you can get the cost straight away by saying the cost of what I've written down there, this is page 5 I believe. Yep. The cost there then, as a function of a is 10a, but a function as a cost, a cost as a function of x there, therefore, uh, is then, is 10 times the a, the area's function of x, if you, if you see what I mean. So 10 times 50x minus 2x squared, if you multiply the 10 times through that, and remember when you're multiplying a bracket, you multiply both parts, elements in the bracket. So 10 times 150x gives you 1500x, minus 2x squared times 10 which is 20x squared so now you've got an equation for the cost 
of the 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 tough and whatever he's going to do. Right, he needs for a square meter. He can he can work that out just by knowing the length of the breadth. Now, I know that seems kind of obvious, but it's just to give you an idea of how you can build on equations and use it's like it's like it's like functions are, are embedded in each other, and uh, it's very useful. So page six, I'm just expanding on that a little bit, and uh, that's just what I've just said, Julie. Really. But example two, the circumference of a circuit is calculated using the function. The circumference equals pi, this number pi, that we always use, 3.14 times the diameter of the circle. The diameter in this part of the circle the distance between the, the edges of the circle so that goes through the middle and uh, that's what we call the diameter generally in engineering but not all the time you're using your diameter when you're looking at pipes and friction and pipes and stuff like that and pumps and compressors and things you tend to use your diameter but in dynamics and other mathematical type uh, engineering you would maybe you'll use what they call the radius which is half the diameter there is reasons for that and they will come to you after a couple of years <laughs> no, it, it does it's, there is a lot of reasons why I use that and you'll have a good idea by the end of this course why we use radius instead of diameter and these kind of calculations with algebra and, uh, and electricity uh, AC calculations you tend to you, you, we'll get there we'll get there right so this is an equation this C the circumference equals pi D that's an equation the circumference in terms of D you, could, you can call that a function the function of the circumference in terms of d or if it respect to d equals pi d so the, the circumference is a function of diameter yep. and simply that all you do is you multiply the diameter by 3.14 and pi as I've got there is simply the circumference divided by the diameter and it's this uh, one of these numbers that occurs in nature you know it doesn't end actually it just goes on forever it doesn't get to a zero at any time and we've got these big massive computers that are trying to work it out and it's, it's got maybe it's, they've got it doing maybe millions and millions of places but they can't actually get it to a, a, a whole real number it's a real number not a whole number it's quite a bizarre thought actually anyway so yeah, as I was saying there, we generally deal with radius. So the circumference as a function of diameter is just pi times diameter. Now to number seven. So I'm just saying there again. So the radius in terms of diameter would be the diameter divided by two. So if you want the values of the circumference in terms of radius, what we have to do is, is put the, the function of the radius in for the diameter and then multiply the circumference. So instead of getting pi d, you get d which equals 2r. So you put the r, so in other words, if you want to find the circumference in terms of radius you need to use 2 pi r because to find the radius in terms of diameter the diameter equals 2 times the radius so that's where the 2 r comes instead of having d pi d you've got pi 2 pi r because the d is equal to 2 r that's again a kind of form of embedding 
uh, equations into each other. I don't want to get too too hung up and too complex with this. We'll, we'll kind of just get into this and then we'll kind of move on and hopefully start understanding this stuff. Right, so, so there we go. It's circumference equals 2 pi r. Um, in page 8 what I've got here I'm just going over again we've got the so the circumference in terms of radius is equal to 2 pi r where the function is multiplying r by 2 pi so the function is the process you use to find the answer you're looking for from the data you've got now looking at another if we've got the circumference or a circle, well, a, lot the, a lot of times you, you, you need to find the area of a circle and that's been the, the equation for the area of a circle is pi r squared. I'm just going to check if you can kind of see that. Just about, it's not good is it? It's not good. But just go with the notes, right? And then I'll go into the studio shortly and we'll go through some some arms bar you said. Let's get back to that. Right, so So the area of a circle is pi r squared as a function of the radius, or as a function of the radius is a brackets r equals pi r squared. I know it doesn't, it doesn't really seem like they're exactly the same essentially they are but it's just a subtle difference and it's, it comes handier when you're looking at more complex uh, equations and stuff and situations Right here what I'm looking at is so how do we develop this area of a circle. See we've got a cylinder and you want to know the, the, the volume of a cylinder. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the square where you get your breadth times the length. It's in a sense the area is your breadth as such and so see you've got an area of 10 and you've got 1 there so the, the volume is going to be 10 times 1 but if it's got 2 there it's going to be 10 times 2 or if it's got 3 there coming out with 3 it's going to be so it's going to 10, 20, 30 kind of thing but that's that's so how do we transpose that to a function of volume if you have the area and then if you've got the radius so the volume equals pi r squared times the length or the volume equals pi r squared times length or the length times pi times i squared r squared whatever way you want to write it so at this page 9 so the volume as a function of area v brackets a equals a times l so that's if you want to do that as a function of the radius then you can exchange the area and change that to the pi r squared so instead of getting v as a function of a now we have v as a function of r which is pi r squared times l or l pi r squared does that make sense so you're attributing attributing uh one of the variables to the answer if that makes sense so the volume as a function of r yeah that says at the bottom here this notation here shows the volume as a function of a function where it shows how data can be related and connected to each other that's kind of what's happening here when we're talking about this and a lot of these ones we're looking at are quite simple situations looking at volumes and things that when you get uh, into engineering systems but well, much bigger we've got a lot of different uh, variables and, and physical properties 
is uh, do you need to be able to keep a track of what you're doing in your equations? So 10 there, I've got some examples there. So yeah, if you've got in one there, f of x, 20x, if you've got g of x is x plus 5, f of g of x is 20x plus 5. I'd probably expand that out actually. I'd put that as, I'd multiply the bracket through there. That would be 20x plus uh, 100. What we'll do is I'll maybe try this thing with this camera and I'll write these down. Let's see. I've never used this before. But let's we'll see. Right. So this one here. That's one. Who's that like? That's not bad. Right. So you've got f of x equals 20x and g of x equals x plus 5. My hands look terrible using all that bloody hand stuff. Uh, so you should, you basically well, if you look, if you want to get f of g of x, you're substituting this into this part. So that would be twenty x plus five, and I'd expand that out to so twenty x plus a hundred. I'll look at another one. that one there with the sign. We are going to have to look at uh, trigger, uh, trig functions and graphs. We're going to do a wee one at the end of the day as a task. Uh, let's see this one. But they just don't work exactly the same way. So f of x equals sine x and g of x equals what was that? x squared minus 2 and f of g of x equals the sine of x squared minus 2 or sine of x squared minus sine 2 you'd probably leave that at that in our trig function you'd probably leave that at that but anyway none doesn't matter we just carry on So these ones here, these ones I'll ask you to try. This one, f of x equals 2x squared and, sorry, g of x equals 5x. Substituting this into there for f of g of x is going to give us two what is that? 5x oh, that's sorry that's 5x I don't know like it 5x squared you see what I'm doing there I'm just putting the 5x into there and let's see you multiply that through but we square this whole thing you square everything that's inside it so that's going to be 2 times 25 because 5 times 5 is 25 times x squared which will be 50x squared. And here, this other one, I'll just check if you can still see that. Hey there. I think I just mocked up there. I thought I was videoing where I wasn't. <laughs> so, I'll just kind of go over this again. I was looking at a function and a function. And we substitute 
say for instance x plus 5 into there I'll give you this what I was doing here was brackets what I was saying there if you have 3 times a bracket that's got x squared plus 4x plus 2 in it you multiply each element by this number or the number in front of the bracket so that would be 3x squared plus 12x plus 6 over here we have 2x times this bracket x squared plus 4x plus 10 so you multiply that through that will be 2x times the x squared so you're going to be the 2 times that plus the x times that so it's 2x cubed plus 2x times the 4x which is 8 2 times 4 plus x times x x squared is 8x plus 10 times 2x which is going to be 20x when you have a bracket there and another bracket that's a different situation but the, the key of this one is you have to multiply every element in another bracket by each element in this bracket so x times this plus x times that plus 3 times this plus 3 times that so that's going to be x squared plus 5x plus 3x plus 15 and you can add these together because you've got 3x plus 5x is going to be 8x ax squared plus ax sorry x squared plus ax plus 15 and this one here we've got 2x multiplying this one so you get your 2x squared 2x multiplying this one which is going to be minus 2 times 2x or 2x times minus 2 which is going to be minus 4x then you have 4 times x and it's plus 4 so it's going to be plus 4x then you're going to get plus 4 times minus 2 a minus times a plus is going to be a minus number or negative number if you have a negative number multiplying another negative number that's going to be a positive number so in this situation we're left with 2x squared minus 4x plus 4x minus 8 which is going to be 2x squared minus 8 and I'll do a little uh, I'll do a tutorial with more examples of these and in the next few days I'll do a wee video like this and I'll put it up and I'll send it to you or whatever and you can go over them and as I say I'll put the answers up right well, that worked alright is the camera on? yep we're running <laughs> we're kicking my gas right this is uh, page 11 more function examples I'm just going to blabber on a bit more of this stuff as I say I'll put a wee tutorial up about brackets and stuff and you'll get more confident with them as the more you do them you get more used to the procedures and the, the way, they, way they do them right well there's the answers there I've kind of went through them there with that apart from number three one yeah. T1. right so what I've got there 2x squared I've got 5x, so 50x, I think we've got that, x squared. Yeah, so what I'm saying is 2 times 5x squared, so whatever the bracket is squared, and then multiply by 2. So if you had 25, right, and 4x is a g of x, and you were squaring that, it would be 25 times 16x squared. Just like what well, I've got there, 25x squared. It's just another kind of example of that. And the 16, the reason you get because you get 4x squared, it's you square the 4 and the x, so you get 16x squared. And there's the other ones there. This last one, f of x equals 10x and g of x is 4x plus 3 so you're multiplying whatever's in the bracket because you're substituting the 4x plus 3 into the x so it's 10 times 4x plus 3 and you multiply everything in the bracket through so 10 times 4x plus 10 times 3 gives you 40x 
plus 30. So f of x, this other one, say for instance f of x equals 7x and g of x equals 12x minus 7. You're putting that 12x minus 7 into the x for the f of x one. So that's going to be 7 brackets 12x minus 7, 84 minus 49. I'm just going through, I'm solving them as such, so 25 times x squared plus 10 is 25 x squared plus 250. Uh, I seem to be kind of going over it again, but I'm just trying to illustrate to you when you have a bracket, you need to multiply everything in the bracket. And you can add the same term together like if you've got x's and stuff. There we go, 2x times 3x plus 5, it's 6x squared plus 10x. Excellent. Again, looking at the, the cylinder, this is maybe try to put some figures into this to give you an idea of what we are. So we've, we've from before, we've got the volume is equal to the length times pi times the radius squared. If you know the length is 3 metres long, you know the radius is 0.1 metre, and the volume is going to be 3 brackets, because you don't have to have brackets here actually. I just do that, it's just a habit of mine. I tend to put a lot of stuff in brackets when I maybe don't need to, but it's just to, to me you can remember. But here we've got 3 times pi 3.14, times the 0 0.1 squared. I'll put that in brackets just to remind you, you're only, you're only squaring the, the radius here. And when you, you add all that up, it comes to 0 0.00942 meters cubed. So imagine it's maybe about a hundredth of a cubic meter. That should be about right. I'm thinking about it. On page 15, more examples f of x equals 3x squared, gx, g of x equals x squared minus 1. So the function of g of x is going to be 3 right here. This is a bracket here. Right. So I'm going to go back to this other wee. What I'm going to do. Uh, I'll actually like you to have a go at these problems then. So basically with that, with page 15 on question 1 there is f of x equals 5x minus 3. I want you to put the g of x into there and then tell where it is. Then do that for those ones. That's part of this week's tutorial. I'll not put the answers here ever. <laughs> And here's some solutions to help you find it. So, there you go. Well, you can just kind of look at them. And figure it. Well, what was the question? I did have a question for you. I gave you a volume. And I gave you a length. And I wanted you to work out the radius. From that equation. So what I'm doing here, I, oh, that's question nine, please know what's going on here. Hmm. What's on there, 16, I need to look up, 17, I don't know. I realise I've dropped so many pages, actually. Seventeen. Right, that, that's. Right,
here I'm just talking about balancing the equations out. I want you to try and do that one then, that uh, one in the page beforehand there's a volume, a wee small volume and there's a, there's a volume uh, uh, and there's a length. I want you to rearrange the equation and figure out what uh, R is going to be. There's another part of your tutorial for this week. Let's go here. Right, what I'm talking about here is what we've done is rearranging an equation to show what a, a singular value of y is or what a singular value of x is. If you're doing a graph, you want to know for, for the, all the vertical parts of a graph, that's all singular, that's what y is on its own. And the x part at the bottom, the horizontal path, if you wanted to know the other way around, if you wanted to know what the x was, you, you have to get x on its own on, say, like the, the left hand side and see what that is in terms of y, or if you want y on the left hand side and see what it is in terms of x. Generally, in algebra and geometry, and we generally would put the y on the vertical axis, and it's gen generally kind of easier to to stick to that convention, so y it always equals a function of x, generally, you'd always kind of see that, usually, but it doesn't have to be like that, it can be whatever you like. <laughs> hey, so here I'm just talking about if you've got, for instance here, if I were to get that in terms of, go say, Find the expression of x in terms of 12y equals 4x plus 20. If I were, I, I would put maybe 4x plus 20 on the left hand side equals 12y. Then, excuse me, if you've got 4x plus 20, to get rid of the 20 you'd have to subtract 20 from that. And then you'd have to subtract 20 from the other side. That's what I'm doing down, just a few lines down. So we add 20 to the right and the left hand side, which will give you 12y equals 4x plus 20 minus 20. So it's have to be a minus 20 at the 12y as well. Yeah, so 12y equals, that'll be 4x equals 12y minus 20. I'm assuming that'll be in the next page. Show me. What is this? That's 18. I'll check for 19. Oops. Right, I right, please 19, it's right there. So 12y minus 20 equals 4x plus 20 minus 20. So 12y minus 20 equals 4x. I kind of flip it around. And 4x equals 20y minus 20. You're going to have to divide 4x by 4 and that will give you x on its own. And that will equal your 12y minus 20 divided by 4. And everything on the right hand side is divided by 4. So you're going to end up with y equals, sorry, x equals 3y minus 5. Yep. Alright, this is the last page of these notes anyway. Alright, well there's a the solution to that. <laughs> that wee test I just said to say to you. So there we go, that's us working out the the radius just from knowing the volume and the length for that uh, equation for the for the cylinder. Right. So what I'm gonna quickly look at now is the notes, the written notes. I'm get these out of here. Not the written notes, the uh, notes. 
Right, so if you get the notes out I've given you, basically I'm just kind of going over the what we're trying to be learning over the next few weeks. I'm just quickly going into there about doing the same, but an equal sign is like a balance. So you need to to balance each side of it. In other words, if you if you add twenty to one side, you need to add twenty to the other side. If you multiply it all by three, you need to multiply the left hand side and the right hand side by three. That you have to do exactly what you do one side to the other side. Uh, I've got a wee example of that. Two x equals ten. You divide x by two to get x. You have to divide it ten by two. That gives you five. But you have got two five you get ten. So it's, it's common sense. And again, down here, you know, there's just a few examples of it there. So see we've got 4y equals 3x, 12x minus 24. So we divide the by 4. 12x divided by 4 is 3x minus 24 divided by 4 is 6. Just kind of self-explanatory. Then I'll set you a task to do these once. And and solving it for in terms of y and x just for the hell of it <laughs> but I've actually got the, the the solutions here if anybody does have it they're quite self explanatory if anybody does have any questions on that welcome to give me a, an email I'm doing this during the day I need to format this and then put it up to YouTube and that so I'm going to be about tonight, so if you want to email, email me between 6 or any time after 6, I'll be available if anyone's got any questions. Or if you want me to maybe quickly run through a few things, I can do that. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'll shoot up a tutorial, tutorial up for you before, before 6. So hopefully you can have a look at this. And then have a look at the tutorial. And anybody get any questions, just get back to me. So let's see, I'm just going through this. Right, this is a task I wanted you to do. Right, draw graphs for the functions y equals x squared, going from plus 10 to minus 10 on the x axis. So in other words, go from minus 10 to plus 10 and put that into the function of y equals x squared. So if x is 1, it'll be 1. So if x is 2, y will be 4. That kind of thing. And then I want you to plot y equals x squared over 2 and going from minus 10 to 10 on the x axis. I want you just to, just to, to get you to have a feel for equations and graphs and, and writing them up and stuff and get a, what, they, what they call is curve sketching is when you look at the equation and you can do a couple of bits and bobs to it and it, it allows you to kind of generally sketch the curve which gives you a really good idea of what the equation is doing or the function is doing or your machine say that uses this kind of whatever expression is if you can draw a graph of it you, you know what's going on for the machine but this is uh, obviously just in geometry, so we're just learning the kind of basic rules of, of curve sketching. And so, what I want you to do is, and then I want you to get y equals x squared minus 10. And draw that on the same graph, so draw all three of them on the same graph. And I want you to tell me what the differences are between the curves. And like if you've got y equals x squared minus 10, what is the relationship of minus 10 to y? Whereas you've got y equals x squared, what difference does minus 10 do with the graph? Now, task 3 I've got here. Uh, 7y plus 5x equals 29. And 2y plus 10x equals 34. Right. 
what you can do that's why you plot them for y and I want you to plot the graphs you know what well, we'll just do it now let's have a look Right, what I've got here is 7y plus 5x equals 29 and we have 2y plus 10x equals 34 right, let's have a look, see we're going to draw this graph just roughly right now you could actually see this see if you look at a graph this is x and this is y and you think well there is another way of kind of writing this you could write this that this line here you could actually say this is at line x equals zero and you could say that this line here is at line y equals zero can you see like so so whenever x is 0 you're going to find the point that y right I'll, I'll try and explain this so say say you, you just say you said so x is 0 right in this part I know that's let's see let's y. Right, so 7y plus 5x equals 29. If you make that 0, that's going to be 7y equals 29. So y is 29 over 7. I could have picked better numbers, I suppose. And that's just over 4, something like 4.1. So when x equals 0, this is going to equal... 4.1 something like that, yeah. and then let's have a look let's find where it crosses the x-axis at this part so when y equals 0 so say we put y equals 0 in this part that means we will have 5x equals 29 and that means x equals just under 6 5 point so like that. So when y equals zero, x is going to equal five point two. If this is a straight line, that's going to be like that. Yeah. Now this bit here, if we make so this is one and this is two. Right, and see so we've got two y. See so we make x equals zero here, so two y equals seventeen. So y equals eight and a half. So I've got here somewhere. And then if you make y equals zero, so ten x equals three point four. So x equals three. Well, that's 34 sorry so that'll be 3.4 so x equals 3.4 and this will be like that this will look like that this line see this point here we've come across this before by the way can any of you remember where we've came across a situation where we have two equations and we want to find the point where the equations have the same elements or the variables are the same. This is exactly the same as Kirchhoff's current law when we end up with 30 equals 2i1 plus 
5 i2 and we've got like 15 equals 3 i1 plus 4 i2 that kind of thing what we did in your exam and this is the exact same thing this is called simultaneous equations and what we were doing when we were working out the, the current in that circuit we were working out the point where these are both the same and if we could have drawn them out as a, as a graph you would have found a point where they intersect and at this point here the x in this one equals the x in this one see that see that was like y1 and x1 y2 and x2 and also at this point the y1 is going to equal the y2 so when these equations meet the x and the y's are going to be exactly the same and that's very handy when uh, trying to connect two different sets of data together that have got the same variables right let's see that worked. right hope you got that there and uh, what I'm going to do is set you a couple more tasks actually for a tutorial. I'll send the tutorial in before six. Yeah. There's a couple of other things I want to go on a little bit. But I'll just leave that there now. I'll send you more stuff in the next few days but watch out I'll put more videos up but I will let you know and I'm going to put another video up about uh, more curve sketching and more of this cutting the x and the y axis and what you call it you call that the roots of the equation and this is related to the domain and the range and stuff but we'll get into that terminology in a wee while but right, so what I'll do is if I'll send you a tutorial and have a go at that and then I'll send you the solutions plus I'll do another wee video on the roots of equations within the next two or three days or something like that good stuff yeah nice to see you again <laughs> take care everybody cheers